Don Barnes here with Red Barnes Audio, and today we're going to look at RX-4 and spectral repair to remove some noises that are in this audio. So this was submitted to me by Sean Tool on our Facebook group. So if you haven't joined yet, find us on groups slash audio rescue, all one word. And we have a group there that handles rescuing audio in RX-4, RX-3, whatever. Join us. It'll be in the description below. So here's our, our base audio that we're going to start with. And there's an anomaly here. One here. On, on. One here. Put them away. Put, th put them away. Put them away. They're all the same type. So once we figure it out for one, I J F, I J F. So let me play the full file now that you know where those are. During that time, she did not have any pain. By Ron V. I put them away, and we couldn't figure out how they got there. I J S. During. So pretend this is the perfect take, and you know we don't have the studio set up. We got to bring in the talent again to reread this, and we just want to save it. Sometimes it's not about perfection. It's about being good enough for the application we're using, depending on the budget. So we want to save this take. We don't want to have to redo it. So let's listen to this guy here. There it is. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in using the keyboard. You notice, by the way, that I zoomed in how off my selection was. Now let me pull up Spectral Repair. So there's my little... Yeah, that's obnoxious. Sounds like a little jackhammer there. So I'm going to pull up Spectral Repair. And with Spectral Repair, the first thing, my go-to tool for this sort of thing is attenuate. And I'm going to try that. Let's try it at level two. I kind of take the defaults here. I think the default's a little different. By the way, if you don't know what the default is, all you need to do is double click and it will take you to the default for each of the sliders. So if I can't remember, what in the heck did I set that default to? That's what I'm going to do is double click on them. My default is starting here on two and we'll go ahead and we'll process that through and then we'll listen to it. On, 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 on. That's not bad. Ron, V, Ron, V, Ron, V, Ron, V, Ron. Okay, I think we can do better than that, but there's a good starting point. So, what I'm going to do, Control Z, Command Z if you're on the Mac, and I'm going to try that again, but sometimes I'll push it really hard, three and a half, get close to four, and just try it. See what I get. Undo is your biggest friend here. We're going to undo these over and over again. Or we can use compare. I'll show you that one in just a minute. We'll compare here in just a second. So now let's check how that worked. On, 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 It's still, it's not bad. I really could almost live with that. I, I just happen to know we can do better. So a couple little bonuses here. Sometimes viewing these, this one's really clear. It's easy to see. Sometimes they're just not so clear. A couple things you'll want to do is grab this and change the intensity scale here. And by doing that, some things will just pop out at you and be easier to see. Sometimes you do actually want to lower it. Sometimes you want it higher. And if you double click on it, you're back to the original default. So there's a lot of behaviors here people don't realize. They double click up here. They zoom out. They use this. I use this all the time, this plus, which puts it in the middle. But there's a double click behavior on a lot of controls to get them back to their defaults, depending on what you're doing. So constantly trying, hey, what does double click, double click do here and there? Another little bonus. I almost always run this thing with this closed and learn what the icons are. There's tool tips so you can see what these items are, spectral repair and denoise. So while you're learning, yeah, you can have this open. Once you get a little further along, close this, give yourself the extra real estate. Makes life sweet. So we'll drill in here. And the one other thing I might do, if I can't see something, is I'll go to the spectrogram settings. Sometimes adaptive sparse is far clearer in some situations. Now it also depends on our zoom level, whether adaptive sparse is better. But I do switch back and forth between the default, which is auto adjustable, and adaptive sparse, and then Every once in a while, you'll be shocked. You'll try one of the other ones, and it actually works better for your specific situation. So don't take my word that adaptive sparse is the way to go. It takes more CPU power. That's why it's not the default. But it's a great tool when you need it when you're working on a specific problem. So let me put it back to normal. But just remember, you can go over there, change that. And there's a lot of other things you can do depending on what your needs are 
just giving you an overview of some of the possibilities. Now, the other tool that I will use sometimes is replace. Attenuate tends to be where I'm at most of the time, but every once in a while, like this kind of noise, replace is actually better. So watch this. This is pretty wild. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in. Now, I like to be, in this case, if I'm doing replace, I'm more precise with it. Understand that, that RX does not use these boundaries literally. It's going to feather in the fix based on what's before and after. It's really smart about that. Somebody was really clever. Hats off to that guy. I don't know who did that, but it's really clever. So I'm going to choose replace. I'm going to put it at 100%. A lot of times I use less of this. And let's just go ahead and try it. Now, visually, this is wild. Look at that. It, it, I can't tell where it was before. Now we can, we can use undo. But now let's listen to this guy. Um, 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 um. I'm going to zoom the other way so you can get a bigger perspective. Ron, 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 Ron. Okay, now that's really good. I really like that. That is Ron so sweet. V, Ron, V. So if, if somebody didn't know it was By there, Ron v. it's as good as gone. It's hard to get better than that. But, okay, let's pretend we wanted perfection. Sometimes if I'm learning the tool, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the compare tool. And that allows me to say, okay, well, what else could I change here? One, let's use a little less area. And then the other thing we'll do. Now, here's what I recommend. Don't make two or three changes. I'm going to make two or three changes because we're doing a demo and I want to save time. In the real world, if you're doing this, you have something that you've created here. This is a specific set of settings. Now, when you do another one, I change the setting to 75%. I put a compare in like that. I only want one change per compare. But me being obnoxious like I am, I might change a couple things just for fun. I'm going to put this down and I'm going to change how many the bands. And what will surprise people is everybody thinks, oh, more is better. You know, crank this up. Maximum. Give me max. I want extra strength. Extra strength does not always sound right. It actually makes it worse. So try this at 256. Try it at 128. And it really depends on how important the fix is to you in this particular instance. And then now I have a different setting here. And this tool allows me to also view, this is what my settings were. Here are the settings for this one. Here are the settings for this, which is really helpful when you're learning the tool and trying to understand what it does. Also, if you do have the advanced version, which is really slick, uh, set this to multi-resolution. It just takes more CPU power, and it will almost always, not always, almost always give you a higher quality fix at the expense of more CPU. So if you're running an application where you just, you're trying to save some cycles, don't use that. But it's really good sometimes. I'm going to leave it off. Everything we're doing here, you can do in the standard version of RX, but understand there are some options if you need a higher end repair. But now I'm going to go through and I'm going to compare these, and I'm going to do preview. Now, what we also have to do is I'm going to take this number three and I'm going to process it. And I'm going to listen. Iron V. Iron V. Okay. I don't like that one. And so because I closed the compare, I lost those settings. I like this better at 512. Process that there. Ron V. Ron V. Now I hear a slight. There is a. Ron. By Ron. By Ron. By Ron. There is a slight echo in that. So I could go through and actually find that and pull that out, and really make that. If if we wanted to take the time, another two minutes, we could make that thing absolutely perfect. But let's go ahead and fix the other one. So I'm going to settle on this. Pretend I liked it. I'm going to go back to 100 here. Now all I have to do. Is go in, find my other ones, zoom in just a little. Once I find the setting, because these are all the same sounds. I'm going to do another video. I've got a sound that's a little, it's totally different. It's more like a little siren or a little gl glitch sound, a gurgle. And that's just in the spectrum. But I'm going to take this, process that guy. During that time, she did. During that time, she did. And so no one will know that guy was there. And we go through, move this around. 
find this process process and one more final process now I could be a lot more precise with these all right I normally what I would do just so you know I'm going to zoom in on it I'm going to find it and I'm going to adjust it there's actually one in here too that I'm going to take out I can't hardly hear this gun that's really lightweight that one by the way so I have something that's that light sometimes I'll cheat I never people don't think of this tool I go in and find the gain tool. And I've got a couple of presets that I've put in. I have one I call thump removal. I think it's in the real low end that I want to take out. I just dump it by 35 dB. Um, I also have one in here that's just a reduce by 3 dB. So whatever I have highlighted, it's just going to take it down 3. And by the time I do that, I do one more. By the time you take it down 6 dB for this kind of thing. IGS. 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 You can't even tell it was there, and if it really bothers me, sometimes I'm doing partial selections where you can you can get away with just if you do the top part and bring it down an extra 3 dB. That's all you need. IGS. And that just IGS. takes it out totally. And there's a, there's a few other tricks here that we could do, but I want to make clear that on this type, I tried attenuate first. It was not too bad. Replace I happen to like better in this particular noise. But most of the time, I'm going to be over here on attenuate, and then you have some other options. If you're, you can change the intensity scale over here to see some noise that isn't as clear, and you can ch change the spectrogram settings. And when you switch displays, you very often will see some things that you couldn't see in the original display. So you combine zooming in with these other tools for looking at it. You can do some amazing fixes in here. I do a couple other things to this file. There's all sorts of uh, clicks here. I'll get rid of this. And I, if I'm working on one monitor, which I almost never am, I'm going to also go through and choose Edit Preferences. And I go to Display. And under Display, the floating window, I once you know this box, you see this here, I'm going to have this sitting at about 85 most of the time for me. There we go. And that allows me to see through a little bit, and you can put it where you like it and say, okay. Now, it's less clear. I mean, there's clutter because I have all this background behind it. But if you use this a few times, you know what these controls are, and you know where they are. You don't need to see the details. Therefore, go ahead, and, and it makes it a lot easier to see behind it rather than have it all totally obscured. Now, it makes the demo kind of weird because if you're not familiar with these and you're trying to learn them, and understand what's going on, then it's just not very clear. So we'll put that back. Use OK. So that obscures me, but I have a, I have a couple sounds here. Now you can do some really interesting things here. I can go to the D clicker, and what people don't realize is that when you have something that's that severe, and if you take a small little spectrum there, I can go to D click, and I can actually crank this guy up. I'll just use everything only in standard, process through, and my clicks are mostly gone. All right. This guy's still there. I'd have a tendency to run over here to spectral repair, have him on a two, a little bit of waiting afterward, process that. Now it's totally gone. Sometimes, like I said, you can't see those, so you might crank that up just to take a look at them. But I G F I G no one will know I was ever there. Now that's our goal. If I'm done, nobody knows. This is the, uh, as an engineer, you're working in the background and you're doing all this stuff. And when you do it right, nobody knows you were there. They don't appreciate you, but that's okay. That's we don't need we don't need the public thanks. I'm gonna get rid of that guy. I don't like him. Oh, I could you know I could use D click on it too. By the way, it'll take it right out. Up there. I don't usually use that. I can use D click. I could use gain on that. I can use spectral repair. We have a lot of options, and we're just kind of. Yeah, taking it out on the surface here. But let's listen to our, our complete thing at the from beginning to end. Let me zoom back out. I can double click up here. That's another area that has a double click. I could have also double clicked down here on this control, which will take me back all if I'm sitting over here, I can double click. I get back here, double click over here. You can see a lot of stuff. So let's listen to this. I didn't fix everything, but here's how it is after we're all done. During that time she did not have any pain by Ron V. I put them away and we couldn't figure out how they got there. 
IJS. During that time, she did... That's pretty darn good. Could be better. It'd take me about three minutes if I was not talking to you, and we'd have that thing totally done and on the way. If I really wanted to do a great job, I could spend 10 minutes with it. I'd also do some denoising on this, and it looks a little noisier than it really is, but I'd, I'd run a very light denoise, and I would run the declicker in a couple places and take out a, just a few little pops and clicks that bother me. But it's still absolutely amazing how much of that we pulled out very quickly, and you can do this a lot faster than I did it. So I hope you enjoy this. I've got another tape coming up here real soon that talks about some other noises that are embedded in words that we can just pull right out, and we'll use some different tools in that one. So hope you enjoyed this. This is Don Barnes from Red Barnes Audio. Be sure to join us in the Facebook group, which is group slash audio rescue, and we'll see you on the wires. Look forward to seeing you in the next demo.